bring in Louisiana Republican Senator John Kennedy. Senator, hello. Uh, you are joining us, sir, on a very busy news day. As we learn, a uh, special counsel has been named uh, to investigate President Biden's handling of these classified documents. Please weigh in, sir. Well, I, I just find all of this surreal. It, it's, um, it's almost like watching a Quentin Tarantino movie. I, I suppose my first thought is that uh, all of this is yet one more example of why in Washington, D.C., if it were not for double standards, there wouldn't be any standards at all. Uh, I'm not surprised that the Attorney General has appointed a special counsel. I'm not sure he had a choice. Um, the White House has tried, and the White House doesn't have enough hazmat suits to clean up this mess. Aside from the obvious that uh, the Justice Department is investigating President Trump for something that President Biden himself may have done, there are a lot of other intriguing questions for the Inspector General. Number one, was there a cover-up? Um, uh, the powers that be have known about all this since November 2nd. It's now the middle of January. Was there a cover-up? Who was involved? Number two, what's the role of the University of Pennsylvania uh, Biden Center in all of this? The, um, the Penn Biden Center is not some normal Ivy League think tank. It was, we now know that it's in Washington, D.C. It was a hangout, a clubhouse for President Biden and his people before they were inaugurated. And allegedly, it is funded with tens of millions of dollars uh, from China. What, what's up with that? Um, number three, what's the role of the National Archives in all of this? The, the National Archives was scathingly critical of President Trump and his documents. Uh, they've known about all this since November 2nd or 3rd. Um, they've been missing in action with respect to President Biden and his documents. You, 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 uh, you couldn't have found them with a search party. We still haven't heard from them. What's up with that? And I guess my fourth question is, um, did any member of Congress know about this? I didn't. And if some of my colleagues knew mm -hmm. about it, I'd, I'd like to know why I didn't. You know, uh, Senator, we, we also look at the way that Joe Biden responded to what happened at Mar-a-Lago in that now infamous interview was 60 Minutes. Uh, let's play back what the president said back then. Listen here. How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. I mean, he took a flensing knife to former President Trump. And, and you know, I guess it, something like that, you're kind of re reminded of Matthew uh, 7, verse 3, and talk about specks and logs. Well, as I've said before, life is, uh, life is full of contradictions. But where I come from, we call that hypocrisy. Um, and uh, uh, again, uh, I'm not suggesting that what actually happened is not serious. It is. But I am equally interested in uh, if there was a cover-up. It's been almost 90 days since this happened. And if the shoe were on the other foot, as it indeed once was, uh, many of the, my Democratic friends would be screaming like a banshee about this. But there's been a, a 90 days almost of stone-cold silence, and not just by my Democratic colleagues, by the National Archives, by the Penn Center, by the Justice Department, and I'd like to know what's up with that. Senator, um, Kevin McCarthy spoke, I believe it was in the 11 o'clock hour, so just a couple of hours ago, uh, on Capitol Hill. He took a microphone and he promised this. Listen. I think Congress has to investigate this. Here's an individual that's been in office for more than 40 years. Here's an individual that sat on 60 Minutes that was so concerned about President Trump's documents locked in behind, and now we find it just as a vice president, keeping it for years out in the open in different locations. All right, so he make, it made it very clear where he stands on this. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, with a congressional investigation.
Meantime, we're awaiting the White House, and this press briefing is expected in about 10 minutes from now. Knowing that Queen Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, will be somewhat limited in what she can say and what she can answer there, Senator, what would be your question to her? Um, what did you know, and when did you know it, and who else has been involved in this? And uh, you talk a lot about uh, transparency. Why didn't you tell the American people? Um, the White House has known about this since right before the midterms. Uh, a cynical person could draw a parallel between this and uh, the Hunter Biden laptop, which was squelched before uh, that election. Now we have important midterm elections. This comes out and they keep it quiet. Those are all fair questions. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. But uh, it's been my experience in Washington, D.C., that they're not very many coincidences. Um, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty political place. Uh, I remember Joe Lockhart told me a long, long time ago, though, at the White House, never, never underestimate our ability to screw up. So I mean, maybe it's not a coincidence. Maybe it's just a screw up. Who knows? You talked a second ago about double standards. And if there weren't double standards, there'd be no standards. And, yeah. and we, you know, we look at what the coverage of the Trump document uh, issue was. And, and Brett Baer pointed this out that the New York Times did an elaborate three-dimensional reconstruction of the bowels of Mar-a-Lago that allowed you to virtually walk through and see where the documents were housed and where the tunnels were and where the doors were and where partygoers might be in proximity to a door that led to a tunnel that led to the back room where the documents were being housed. And maybe if you had been able to get away and get past security, you could have gone up to the president's private office where other documents were housed. I mean, if you take a look at that political advertisement, with the president, and he's got his Corvette out there in the driveway of his home, and, and the garage door is wide open, and you see a stack of, of boxes that seem to have documents in them. Well, we don't know if those were the actual documents, but you can make a case that, hey, how long was the film crew there with the door open, and did they have potential access to the documents that were housed inside that garage? I mean, it's just the difference in coverage between Mar-a-Lago and this is stunning. Well, this may seem like a strange analogy, John, but uh, I, I think this is not going away, and the coverage of this, in some respects, is going to be like the coverage of the border crisis. Um, your station started talking about the border crisis early and first, and it was ignored by many members of the media for the longest time, but they can't ignore it anymore, and they're not ignoring it. Uh, I think this this situation is similar. I think you will have some uh, some left of center news organizations who will try to 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 uh, to, to not report on this. But uh, uh, the United States of America is a pretty big rug. It's too big to sweep this under that rug. I, I think the American people are going to want to know what happened. Well, to be clear, it was broken by uh, uh, other news outlets um, initially. CBS, the last uh, document um, reporting was done last night by NBC. Um, so they're in there, and we, we noticed it in the White House press briefing yesterday, right, John? Uh, the reporters were staying on this and pressing. And in fact, one reporter in the room asked Karine Jean-Pierre, are there, are there more documents? Only to find out last night that there were. Yeah. Hmm? So it's, well, it's, it's a very, one it's of the a, questions that, that they're going to have to look at. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a multi-layered onion. <laughs> I think, and we're yeah. slowly starting to peel it back. Uh, Senator, thanks so much. I always appreciate having you on. Thank you, Senator. All right, yeah. let's bring him back in. 